Hey, everybody. Welcome to Thursday's Live, the shit nobody tells you about pain. Today, we are talking about trauma. And trauma is anything that is unresolved, that is deeply disturbing or distressing in an experience that you've had. And we're discussing how that can um, interact with our chronic pain experiences today. So if we haven't met, hi, my name is Amy Eicher and I'm a chronic pain coach and I help motivated women experiencing chronic pain get back to lives they love through the use of education, curiosity, and movement. Um, and I'm excited to have you live today with me. So um, I said just a couple moments ago that trauma is any unresolved, deeply distressing or disturbing experience. Um, and a lot of people think, you know, they initially hear the word trauma and they think, oh, I don't have any trauma. Like, that's not me. That doesn't, that's not part of my pain picture. And what I would like to take a little bit of time to do right now is expand this idea of trauma. I know it's like a big buzzword. And so just bear with me as, um, I try to help you see how maybe this does apply to you and you're not, like, you're just not aware, Right. So I think we would agree unresolved situations tend to create stress, fear, anxiety, right? So that's the first part of trauma is it's something that we haven't been able to solve. We don't, we don't have the skills. We uh, are stuck kind of between a rock and a hard place. We just, you know, we just, we can't figure it out. We don't, we don't, we don't have the skills or the, the resources to be able to get out of whatever situation or experience that we're having. Um, I would say for most of us experiencing chronic pain, if we haven't learned to self-manage, if we are still at odds with our doctors, if we are still like fighting to be heard, that would fall under the, um, the definition of trauma. It is an unresolved, distressing and disturbing experience. Being told by your doctor that you're just having anxiety and you don't really need to worry about it, being, you know, having all of these concerns about pain in various places and being told you just need to lose some weight or you're just a woman of that age. These are experiences that I would consider medical trauma. They probably don't seem that big when you're just you know, thinking about it in the privacy of your own home. But when you really start to take those things apart, you've gone somewhere for help, you didn't get it, your pain is unresolved. And what exactly can you do or say to that doctor or that medical professional? Because it's not always our doctors. Sometimes it's our physical therapists or um, our massage therapists or our pain management doctors. But if we're not getting resolution to the pain and we feel trapped in the medical system, that is something that is traumatic and it affects your nervous system. And if you've been following me at all, you know that your nervous system is responsible for the experience of pain. Without a nervous system, we don't have pain. We're also kind of dead because we don't have anything else. But the nervous system is ultimately responsible for interpreting information in our body and sending back down signals like pain. So another thing that can be considered traumatic that we don't really think about um, in terms of our pain is our needs not being met, being unseen, being unheard, um, unresolved fear or anger from past painful relationships, be that with our siblings or friends or parents, um, but those are all things that can influence the current state of our nervous system. And that's pretty crazy if you ask me. One of the things that research tells us is that 90% of people with fibromyalgia also have some kind of trauma. People that are experiencing pain from arthritis, 60% of them also have traumatic events. This is twice the amount of trauma that we see in the normal population. So we know from studies that adverse childhood events, which is trauma in our childhood, um, you know, before our brain is mature, before the age of 25, we know that that has an influence. We don't know how, but we know that it has an influence on autoimmune disease and chronic pain, especially in women. 
So if you have undergone physical trauma, emotional trauma, uh, neglect, money troubles, housing troubles, trouble finding food, psychological abuse, sexual abuse, or spiritual abuse, these are all things that contribute to the cup uh, of, of pain that we have. So if you think about those events, either singularly or piled on top of each other, um, we know that stress creates tension, right? And unresolved things cause me stress. I don't know about you, but they cause me stress if I can't figure out how to get out of a situation. And tension causes us to tense. We tense our jaw and our shoulders and our pelvic floor and our butts and our backs. And muscles that are tense often cramp and feel bad and contribute to pain, which is why I've been doing um, breathing exercises every Thursday in my Facebook group. I've got a bunch of different breathing exercises that we've been doing to try to calm down some of that tension that we experience. Um, we know that stress, trauma increases our cortisol levels. That increases nervous system sensitivity and activation. It increases hypervigilance. We look out for things that might make our situation worse, right? Nobody wants a more trauma. Nobody wants to be hurt worse, right? Like, so we're always on the lookout. Whether that's you've got an emotionally unstable person in your world and you're constantly on the lookout for their response to you, whether somebody doesn't really believe that you're in pain and so you're constantly adjusting the way that you behave and the way that you interact with them. Um, whether you have another doctor's appointment and you're like sweating it out, thinking about, oh my gosh, what am I going to say? What am I going to do? I don't want to be disbelieved again, right? Like all of these things increase the, the things that make our nervous systems more alert and more on the work lookout. And what happens then is it's more sensitive to the information it's getting from whatever tissues and whatever memories and all of the different systems that, that get looked at to decide whether or not pain is going to be produced in our bodies. Unresolved trauma is a state of fight or flight. So again, more cortisol, more adrenaline, and it's chronic. And our bodies are not meant to function this way. They're not. We're not, we're not meant to operate in fight or flight all the time, right? Having that increase in cortisol and having the cortisol pumping through us at times when it's not really supposed to be, um, it makes our sleep worse. When our sleep is worse, our pain increases. Did you know that if we go three days with less than six hours of sleep, our pain increases by 25%? I mean, I'm telling you, if this is not a wake-up call to get some of that stress and trauma resolved, I don't know what is. Um, we have an enormous amount of trouble managing our emotions when we have unresolved issues in our life because they, they skew the way that we see everything, right? We see everything through that lens of this unresolved issue, whether we're aware of it or not. And all of this increases our experiences with pain, our experiences with headaches and irritable bowel syndrome, right? It also affects long COVID, people with long COVID that is coming from the nervous system and not from being in the hospital or from vascular issues. So, um, and it affects our autoimmune diseases. It affects our anxiety, our depression, like unresolved issues make the nervous system super unhappy. So how do we get the system functioning it again? What if you don't have access to a counselor? What if you don't have access to like tons of money and all that, right? Well, there's ways. And you know that the first thing I'm going to tell you is always going to be breathing because it's free and you're already doing it. So um, I'm going to suggest that you look up breathing techniques if you want. Um, I will drop a link in the comments that gives you access to the Facebook group and you can join me there for ways to um, you know, manage your stressors. Uh, but ultimately, we need to create an environment that feels safe. We can't always resolve every little bit of trauma that we have. Like, Lord knows, 
you know, I've got plenty. I thought, you know, I was adopted and I had parents that had very different parenting styles. And that's actually traumatic because you never know um, what to expect and like what's going to happen when you do something as a small child. And that was really fascinating to me that 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 with two loving parents having such differing parenting styles, it still created a sense of like being on guard and being on watch for me. Um, I was in a relationship that was very unhealthy for close to two decades, and that really drove my pain. And getting out of that relationship and healing and now being in a healthy relationship um, has really been kind of amazing when it comes to uh, how I handle situations now. And I, I didn't spend a ton of money doing that. I did need relationships. I did need interaction with close friends. I needed to open up. I needed to listen to other people telling me that like, hey, there were probably, there were some things I needed to pay attention to. Um, but but overall, it's a system that's not functioning and, and we've got to do something about it. So whether you seek counseling, whether you um, read books or you get involved in support groups, or, uh, you know, uh, you practice breathing and yoga and, and all kinds of uh, stress management techniques. All of that is wonderful. But I want to let you know that this is something we've been talking about in the group for a while, in my Facebook group for a while. And I have developed a course um, called Managing Emotions and Chronic Pain. And that's going to open up March 1st. And I'm really excited about it because it's going to help us with our pain trauma and some of those unresolved things and seeing whether or not they're making an impact on our current pain picture. We're going to have uh, we're going to have all kinds of homework and tips and tools and tricks so that you can manage this on your own if you don't have access to all of these other resources. And we're going to take it step by step. We're going to meet every week for eight weeks. You're going to form um, amazing relationships with the people in your group. You're going to get all kinds of tools and you're going you're gonna to be heard because I believe that it's super important that as a person in pain, we get heard right? And sometimes just having our story heard is one of the ways that we create some safety within ourselves and we begin to resolve those traumas. So if you need some help untangling your knot of emotions and your knot of past experiences, um, be on the lookout for managing chronic or managing emotions and chronic pain. I will be, um, sharing more information as we get a little bit closer to March and check the links out for a blog post that has more information about managing your trauma and pain. I hope this information was um, helpful to you and that you leave any comments or questions you have in the video because I am always happy to answer them. Um, just give me a tag and I will talk to you soon. Bye. -bye.